A reminder, the first 30 minutes of this podcast are available on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Google, and many of the major platforms. The full podcast is available at www.patreon.com forward slash SRB Media. SRB Media. Hey, Gabby. Good evening, CC. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What are you doing, mate? Clean your teeth? Yeah. Well, you come in the when, when Tom said to me, I'll be two seconds. Go on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic, TC. He said, I'm better than a woman. You I can, can multitask. Do, I can do two Absolute multitask. proof that you can multitask. Clean your teeth <laughs> and talk to me at the same time. What magic moments have you sourced for us to? Well, the goal on Sunday for uh, Burnley. Yes. Uh, good Mundson, is it? Good Mundson. Yeah, Johan Berg, Good Yeah. Yeah, great goal. Great free kick. You know, he's got them playing a bit again, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He's done very well. In fact, it's one of my magic moments as well. And Burnley now are top goal scorers in all divisions. He really has done a sterling job there, hasn't he? Brilliant job. Completely brilliant job. And given the fact that it's his first job as well, I know that with Martinez leaving um, Belgium, company's name has been uh, bandished around. No, he ain't going to do that. He wants to learn learn his trade, earn his stripes, and, and then possibly move on to something better. No disrespect to Burnley. They're a great little football club, but managers and people like Vincent Company in the game do want to get to the top and probably well, in, it, in the quickest ways where they possibly can. Yeah, let's, let's look at two things of what you just said. There. Yeah. First and foremost, England and Burnley, if he's successful, he's only gone there to get himself a bigger club. 100%. And I have no, no disrespect to him whatsoever. Yeah. Because he's played at the ice level all his life. Yeah. Uh, and, and if he gets it right, then he's going to move on. Yep. You know it, I know it. Uh, other people will look at it. Oh, he's only doing that because he was Manchester City. He played under Pep Guardiola. Second, second, well, firstly, really, that, that should have been the second point. The first point, what you turned around and said, was uh, it's his first job by him going to... what? I mean, for me, in my opinion, the great managers, yep. right, don't make a difference. They've all got to start out somewhere. Of course they have. Cluffy at Hartlepool, Guardiola under 23s at, um, or B team at uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. You know, wherever they are, they all start at a certain level. 100%. You know, Cruyff, Cruyff started at the ice level straight away, as he did, and other, some other other teams, you know, your Beckham Bowers and all them. Mm. They, they, they were looking to, they, they are looking to sense. Uh, that they get uh, being offered a job to go and take, take on uh, the elite tech uh, teams with elite players, yeah. So, for me, I've never gone down that route, right? What do not baffle me when I look at the English players, what seem to fail in management, but it's all down to our goal being a balance to the team, yeah. You know, when you look at Roy Keane playing with the best managers he's played with, he should not fail. And if you do, and let me tell you, if you do not balance the team up, you will fail. Mm. You will fail. And no disrespect to Keane, I think a lot of people are frightened of him. You know, so I think it puts players off, especially the ones what are really in favour to him. You know what I mean? Big Ron said to me, the uh, three things you need in management is uh, recruitment, selection and motivation. And I think sometimes with managers like Roy Keane, I think you're spot on there. I think the motivation lets him down because I don't think that he can get to the players. I think he players. tries to bully people. Yeah, mate. he does, yeah. And, and I don't think it, it works. And I don't mean that in a nasty way. No, I don't. I think don't. he's a bully because you see him sometimes and he, you think, what a great kid. He, he seems a great kid one minute, and, you know. He don't seem to have any patience with players that can't do what he could do. Good. The, the other thing I would add to that mm. is balance, balance of picking a team. Uh, not balance of pick. Well, yes, balance of picking a team. Yeah, is not having any favourites. Yeah, you've got great managers. Whoever he was, Cluffy, whoever he was, I played under. And you see all the other top managers, Wenger's and all them. They make the tough decisions. Yep. 
You have to. That, if you've got those three, what you said, yeah, and that one, you've got a big chance. Absolutely, and that's what managers are all about. No favourites. You pick your team on merit, and it doesn't matter whether it's your your, your son. Um, your your, your favourite player, a player that you've just spent an awful lot of money on. You know, if that player ain't doing it, you don't get your starting shirt, son. End of. I'm That's the manager what... and you've got to be ruthless. And just a, friend, a friend of mine just called me, worked at all, and Tom, I was telling them, mm. look, he picks the team, South Southgate, yep. right, to stop other people playing. Yes. You watch Argentina and Croatia tonight. They pick a team to go and win a football match. Yeah, they do. When they receive the ball, they always receive it on the on the front foot, yep. so they can take it. The yep. pass is a it's, it's a fantastic way to pass when these when these players are playing it. Pass it. When we play it in England, it's slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, slow. You know what I mean? Yep, I do. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so he plays Henderson the other night. I'm not looking at Henderson because he's played for Liverpool. He's won everything. Mm. I'm not saying Henderson's a bad player. Why? Me, I'd have played Rashford, Saka, Grealish, Bellingham, um, Bellingham, um, Foden in there, mm. uh, and Rice because Madison's hadn't had a game and I don't know if he hadn't had a game because he's not fit or he hadn't had a game because the manager doesn't want to play him. Apparently he's fit it's the manager don't want to play him. Well, so unless you're there you don't know so you you got you can only go on with the players what are playing. He's actually why said he on, is fit. Why, I mean I've not spoke about Jack much because mm. at the end of the day the thing that you've just been because oh, you like him and all that. No. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll leave it alone because it, you're just banging your head against the brick wall. Yeah, but why fetch Jack on? You know, I didn't think they were causing those massive problems. I didn't think, and I wrote on my wall, I didn't think Mbappe played exceptionally well. Quite a game. But he looked always dangerous when he had the ball. Absolutely. And we feared. So he plays Henderson on right-hand side to chase back to well think. That, that tells me straight away we weren't going to win that game. Mm. But before that, he told me we wouldn't win it because I told you, didn't I? Yeah. For me, France 2-1, 2-0, whatever you know, so so end of the day, we'll never win. No, the, the, Pete, I get sick of people, and it's nothing to do with me not liking Southgate. He's such a lovely guy. You know, if I've got a daughter and he and she, she fetched him home, you think, well, she's dropped on there. He's a lovely, lovely bloke, right? He's had three tournaments with really good squad of players. Yes, and easy, easy rounds. Absolutely. And all these games that we win, and all these games that we win, qualifiers and all that. Yeah. Who are we playing? Well, I mean, we, we, we've played absolute rubbish. I've always said this, that the qualification games are a joke. The likes of San Marino, the likes of Andorra, and nations like that should not be in with England. That's why I like the Nations League, because you're playing against three or four nations that are very similar to you in ability. That is a football match. The qualifications aren't. I'd give a bye to the top 16 teams in the World Cup, because I want to see the best players at the World Cup. And I would have them playing Nations League games against, you could throw Brazilian and Argentina into the European uh, fixture list as well. So all the best nations are playing against the best nations and they're testing themselves. We don't test ourselves. We play San Marino, score four goals. You go, hey, brilliant, are we? You mean, even Rubbish. when we play the better teams, how does he play? He'll either play Henderson and yeah, Rice in there or Phillips and yeah, Rice yeah, in there. He's and I'm not knocking them as players. They're good players. Yeah, decent. Decent. But what's that telling us? He's telling us, you He's know, too when negative. Come on towards, we're going to play a defensive type of game and, and play a counter attack. Absolutely. Game. Well, play the counter attacking game. You've got to have players in midfield what's well, got the quality, you know, uh, to see an early pass. Correct. A play with accuracy. You don't tell me a rise, you know. It's too deep anyway. And then there's an. The play the two old midfield players, we're never going to be able to bustle or out, out uh, over. Oh, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? We're um, not going to outplay. We're not going to be no, able no, no, to. No, 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 no. 
outnumber, just a better word, better name for it. Yeah. Over, over, overload. Yeah, that's just the, right? a, a modern. We're never going to overload our opposition midfield. They overload, overload us, but we never overload them mm. unless we're playing the weak teams. Yeah, yeah. When, when you, you know, when, when people say, when people, when people like us say something, you know, oh, you bitter, you don't want to, just nobody wants England to win more than me. Nobody. And everything I've said about football, everything I've said about this COVID, everything I've said about mm. it, it's turned out right. Absolutely, TC. I mean, you called it spot on. I mean, we both called it spot on against France. You put a 2-0 win for France and I got a 3-1 win for, for France. I couldn't see England winning. You're right. Whenever, whenever he's played in free tournaments against a team that you would wouldn't expect them to beat us or us to beat them, but a team that's a match, a proper good match, we failed. Got... He's come up short and he's got the players to do it, but oh, they're on the bloody the bench. They're on the bench all the time. I mean, Madison, if Madison's fit, Madison, uh, Bellingham and uh, Foden in midfield. Yeah, but as good as anybody. Of course we are, but Madison. But he's getting that manager to believe in him. Yeah, but Madison doesn't get the press. I mean, I've, I've been watching this now. I've turned it down. I'm watching the game with the sound down, which is better for me because they annoy me. They've already, no, men- they've already mentioned I Bellingham. Watch, I don't watch your build Belling- up. Bellingham ain't played. I don't listen to half time. Waste of space. You know, it's a, oh, we're talking about players. What the the, the multi millionaires mm. for more money? They're saying they won't. They're going along the the, the woke lines, and I, I won't put up with it. I no, can't absolutely. Put up with but, but what I also can't put up with is if people are telling me that Bellingham is a better player than Madison, I'm sorry, I ain't having it. Madison they, should be once in Once that... they start, once they start the media... Right? But, Listen, but what's he based they're doing on, to? COVID and they do it with football. People Absolutely. Are like sheep. They people are, yeah. like sheep. Absolute sheep. What's I told Bellingham? you before. I, I, it's a nice old Hudson, and I saw Curry. Yep. I've seen great players in midfield that we would not pick. No. We would not pick. We've got to pick box-to-box midfield players What put the uh, art on the sleeve or do me a favour. Or, or, or a defensive-minded midfield player. You aren't going to win nothing playing those players. Right. I posted... I mean, people say to me, Bellingham's a great player, and I'll say, tell me what you think makes Bellingham a great player. I think he's decent. It would right. be in my England team, but he ain't a great player. He gets but, great PR, big listen, difference. I have all coaches, I have all, a lot of players, but even when I were playing, turn mm. around and say, if we got beat, you know, uh, it ain't a sprint, it's a marathon. Yeah. You know what I used to say to him? Yeah. This is what I used to say to him. Let me tell you something. No, it ain't a sprint and it ain't a marathon. But I'll tell you what, this game we're playing today is the most in game, important game we're ever going to play. Absolutely. Because that's the game we're playing. Absolutely. Right? So let's take a World Cup. Right? Those build up, it doesn't start to me until quarterfinals because those build up games, you, you drop on with, you, you're playing weak teams. Spot on. Right? And the game, the game is a, is a what? A, a, a month. A, a month to win a tournament. Yep, seven games. Right. So you have, so how mm. they think uh, we've got a marathon? No, it's not a marathon. So you've got to have it. You've got to have players what's capable of passing, receiving, playing with the tempo, got some pace in the team, right? What are not frightened to lose, are not fear, fear, fear of playing against anyone. And until we get that right with the manager, I've t- listen for years, I, you know. I let me out roll my head with, with football with England. Mm. No, not anymore, because at the end of the day, we're good enough. We haven't got the manager. Spot on. We work. I tell you how we work. This That doesn't change. We work on, or oh, oh, a little bit what's changed is keeping the ball, but it's slow. Yeah. But even majority of the time, we will play, give it away at all costs, and give it into channels. 
or corn, you know, put into corners for somebody to chase. Yeah. And will never change because no. they don't think outside the box and they, they absolutely fear losing. Yeah, they do, yeah. They fear playing creative players as well. And if you don't have players with a Midas touch, if you've got pl- if you're playing with players that can't sprinkle gold dust around that pitch, you ain't gonna win gold. You're gonna come up short and we've called it for years. This isn't a modern thing. We've been doing the podcast now. This is our hundred and thirty seventh podcast. I've been doing podcasts with Alan Hudson now for over four years. We've been saying it from the get go. Gareth Southgate is a lovely man, but he's an awful manager. And if I would you... love I would love to be in that dressing room. Yeah. Or that will that Weak build up to mm. this game, and yeah. I'll tell I'll guarantee you the yeah. emphasis would have been on stopping Mbappe when we get the ball. Let's try and play. They've been tra- they've been practicing it so, for so two what, years. So what, so what happens then? Players, have, it's always in the mind. Yeah, like try and stop the ball. Fucking game to, so yeah. you get yourself in a bad position in the first place. Of course you do. If we receive the ball, you know, if you're receiving the ball, yeah, because you're more might you might thinking about. I would love to see what heard what was said. I'd love to hear what was said to Ben White as well when he went home. I know what the press, the controlled puppets with a pen, had said. I that, didn't know he'd gone home, but go on. Yeah, well, they said he went home for family reasons. He went home because he had a bleeding argument with Steve Holland, who told him to read these dossiers that they've been working on. Dossier, Revy done the same. Dossiers, Alan Ball and Alan Hudson got the dossiers and threw him in the bin. We don't want to read about what they do. We're interested in what we do. And he had a row and he went home. And that was tell me, but I didn't know he'd gone home. Yeah, 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 he's gone home. I did yeah. not know. There's been no matter to get a paper. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, <laughs> you, whether you get the paper or not, there's nothing worth reading in the paper anyhow, because no. most of it is absolute BS. But I don't watch it, Sky Sports News anymore. No, but, but what they've done to you. I stopped listening to Jim White. It's and, pointless. Because, because Jim White is all wanting you all to kneel and white supremacists. And it pissed me off all of it now because I knew I was right in the first place. Absolutely. Jim Jim White needs an operation to extract his tongue from the backside of most people that he talks to and with. He's woke, he's woke and all he wants is money orientated. But if that's what, look, everybody needs money to pay the bills. Of course they do, And have yeah. holidays and have a nice car. And have a, I get yeah. that. Good luck. And if somebody wants to do a little bit of fiddling with tax, man, good luck. But try and pay, pay, pay your taxes so you don't get yourself feeling serious trouble, right? But when you do it because it's woke, yeah, right? It's not for me. You know, and I've had little, not disagreements with Simon about women's football because he don't like it. I don't mind it. But I've not watched it since all this, since yeah. what they've done with all this woke, this new, new, mm. you know. And listen, we've got, our players can't tell us Improvers, we are listening to them to improvers. Yeah, absolutely. So it's um, it is, uh, the best way to watch football now. <clears throat> if they're talking about England, is just turn it down. And and what was nice as well, Croatia versus Argentina, no kneeling before the game, just football. We're the only nation that still does that because we're full of wokeness. But my uh, my other magic moments was um, Lionel Messi. That pass. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's like, you just say, don't you? That pass. First half, another masterclass by Messi. Messi is just an unbelievable talent, as we all know. And yes, he's in his late 30s now. I think he's, what, is he 37? But, but we what remember him when, when he was in his, when he was, uh, prime at his peak. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah he, I mean, he hasn't got the pace, but he still does the unbelievable things with the ball. Well, he's incredible. I mean, he, he just is the world's greatest player. And I'm hoping that Argentina play France in the final. We've done a, a part six of uh, Alan Hudson's World Cup diary. And I, I says to Alan, I'd love to see uh, France beat Argentina in the final. Messi says to Mbappe, look, I've been wearing this crown for a number of years. It, it's your turn now, son. And uh, and. And, and the coronation of the king is in the Middle East at Christmas. I think that would be befitting for a World Cup tournament. I'm not, 
I'm not um, bothered who wins it, but I'd like to see Messi win it because, you know, that would finish yeah. his career off. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. But but I'm I'd, not bothered who wins it. If, but if France win it, now. Mbappe will win his second World Cup and back-to-back, which will be the first time since 1962. And um, and when Pelé won it Pelé. for the second time as well. So, 58, yeah. 58-62. 58, yeah, so, so, so that would be fantastic in Sweden and Chile. But as I say, and, and Audi says, to me, he said you are a romantic, aren't you? He said I can see why Southgate shatters all your illusions. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, and I am out because I don't care who wins. I want to see a game of football. I want to see team. players Good express football. themselves. Absolutely, and I want to see magic moments. Can you uh, remember? Can you remember what I wrote this year and what I said on this podcast? Who will be the next decent manager, upcoming decent manager? What, like England? Is he English, or 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 you mean yeah, in English. England? I said to you this beginning. I voted on my on my Facebook wall, and I mentioned it on there. A manager to watch. Well, you you year. you've you've mentioned Potter. You've mentioned Eddie no, Howe. Yeah, yeah, but that, I'm on about. Right. You, you mentioned. I said to watch Preston this year. Yes, uh, Ryan, Ryan Lowe. Lowe. That's yeah. what I've, but, but I, I not, have said about them. I yeah, have said about them. Him getting his job and all that. T- not just this year, you've been raving about Ryan Lowe for several seasons. Yeah, uh, Plymouth. Yeah, absolutely, right. yeah. Um, my my, my kids would say to me, to say, what are you talking about, Daddy? I said, listen, even if he has a bad season, yeah, he's got, I can see, see things in him, mm. what will take him up to another level. Absolutely. Right? And I, I, I wrote up my wall because I, I, I mentioned um, Cooper, Yep, another one. Before he went to Swansea. Yep. You were mentioning Cooper, I meant to, Liverpool. I meant to put it, I meant to put, I mentioned Potter when he went to Brighton. It, yeah. It, it'd be ten times a better manager than Chris Hewton. Mm. And I like Chris Hewton as a player, just like I like Southgate as a player. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And I said to you, and I said on that, well, I tell everybody on yeah. that thing, they all started to laugh about our better. I, I didn't Simon, because... Simon, a lot of them. Yeah. Simon, a lot of them, they all started to laugh. But you no identified him because I'd said to you ages ago with Sheffield Wednesday, who would you want? Arteta, I think at the time was at Man City with with Pep, and you said I want Arteta. I told I told yeah. Jack Charlton, right? I mean, I told you about the Peter Beardsley thing, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jack, Jack asked me about him to have a look at him, see what I thought. I saw a goalkeeper <clears throat> playing for Bury. And I told Jack to go get him. Nev. You no, know it won't. Nev. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. good enough. Incredible, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable. Mm. Oh, not good enough, is it? <laughs> it's just absolutely. <laughs> it's laughable, isn't it? But my uh, my uh, my other one and my final uh, magic moment was Rory Wilson's goal for Aston Villa's under 18s in the Youth Cup game against Brentford. They put Brentford uh, to the sword five 0 at Villa Park, and that Rory's first goal in particular absolutely sublime. Wonderful pass, by the way. Defence splitting pass. Find yourself. Pretty much on the byline, um, and and he just dinks a goalkeeper. Phenomenal, great talent. They bought the fella from um, from Rangers, and he does look an absolute talent. Again, Aston Villa in the Youth Cup look like a really good unit and uh, and a team to watch. So well done, Rory Wilson, and well done Aston Villa, and well done to the recruitment. At Villa, they really are getting their act together. I know that, you know, it hasn't particularly gone brilliant for them. They had Gerard and before that Dean Smith, etc., etc. But I think slowly the ownership of Villa is turning it round. And um, with Unai Emery now, you can only hope that there's good times around the corner for Aston Villa because I've By always way, maintained it's Birmingham needs a strong Aston Villa to bring way, everybody up to their level. When they, when they were all rage, ranting and raving about this manager at Queen's Park Rangers. Yeah, I know, absolutely. What, what did I say to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. He's got out. He knew. Listen, that's the press. This of course kid, it is. Uh, when, the, do, you know, do you know what started that? Them winning the first few games. Yep. Villa not playing well. And yep. then writing about well, he was the he was the he was the link at Villa. He was the coach. Yeah. They haven't got a clue what they're talking about. This press. No, they haven't. They haven't. 
No, and everybody absolutely. wants to agree with them because they're frightened of being slaughtered in paper. They can slaughter all the They can cancel me tomorrow, all of them. Absolutely, too. And then when he was offered or it appears that he offered the Wolves job, um, they, they come up with a complete cock and bull story about how he wanted to finish the job, etc., etc. He gets offered the Rangers job and he's off. Honestly, it's just got, absolutely... Listen, it's listen, laughable. Listen, you, don't do, you do not turn Premier League down and Wolves. No, he had wind of that, the uh, the, the, the Rangers job. He knew, no, no, no. He knew no, that it, that fellow was listen. on a dodgy wicket. No, listen, that's a dodgy, that's a dodgy wicket he's got now, Rangers. Yeah, it is. And I'll tell you the reason why. Yes, he's only got Celtic to beat. Mm. Right? If you keep getting beat by Celtic, it's like this manager who just who just sat. Yeah. If he was any good, he would have taken the he would have taken the wolf job job. Make no mistake. Yeah, yeah. He left QPR. Because, listen, my opinion, you, Alan Dutson, mm. Alan Ball, Pluffy won't change my mind. He left the year because he knew that team weren't good enough. And everybody telling me they coach this. I said to Thomas, mm. you, I, I'll guarantee you, they'll not finish halfway up. Absolutely. I don't too. think he's going to be a success at Rangers. You've only got Rangers Celtic to, to, to beat, but if you don't win league or cups, you've been a failure. You've up there, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. In everybody else's eyes. Yeah, you, um, you can you know you can finish two uh, second in a two horse race. I mean that literally does sum up Scotland. I've always said Scot- the Scottish league is a little bit like uh, the Spanish league without the sun. It usually is Barcelona and Madrid. It now is a little bit more competitive because as um, Real Madrid have really come up on the uh, on the ranks, Seville has done really well over the last few years, and one or two other Spanish teams have done really well in European competition as well. But in in Scotland, without the money, without the backing, without that finance to buy them better players, they they're really going nowhere quickly. And uh, you're right, so if you finish. Second in that two horse race, you're absolute toast. It's uh, next cab off the rank. Uh, book corner in association with myfootballbooks.com. Uh, Andy always sends us a recommendation. We're doing uh, part 10, by the way, of our uh, podcast, uh, looking at a number of football books that he recommends. But he always sends us one for the podcast every week, and it's 1923. Life in Football 100 Years Ago by Marvin Close. Um, 1923, of course, was the, uh, the the White Horse final at Wembley. West Ham United versus Preston, wasn't it, Billy? 31, 34, that. No, 19, um, 1923. 23, 23. That was yeah, the White Horse early, final, wasn't it, Billy? You know, early. So, but listen, it all baffles, all of it baffles me, we all, you know. Hundred years I ago, though. I started to lose interest with English football because it, everybody follows everybody else. We don't play a, peop- a person like Jack Bailey. What does the un- unpredictable thing? They'll say, "I don't know what Jack's going to do." Well, isn't that good? Do you want the defenders to know what he's going to do? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So we yeah. don't play him. No. So we know we know what Henderson's going to do. We know what Rice is going to do. Well, yeah. I know I know what the team's going to do. Will you beat manager? Exactly. We'll be knocked out predictability predictability on tap 100 100 years ago 1923 looks to be a fascinating book and and goes through all the uh, the goings on of football 100 years ago um so that was andy's recommendation uh, another couple of football books I always like to Look at two, and well, we usually have a, a trilogy, don't we? And I've got an extra one because Andy was a little bit late coming to the party. He just texted me about half an hour ago. Um, the match of the century, England versus Hungary, and the game that changed football six, forever. Um, yes, yeah, 6 three. Three. Nine, 3. was it? Sorry, 6 3, and then they beat us 7 1 in the, yeah. uh, the game in 19. 19- 54. The, the game in 1953 is the focus of this brilliant piece by Matt Clough. And um, when we go out with Maverick Tales, as we do, Alan Hudson's going to talk about what happened when England, the English people, the management, the coaches went back to the drawing board. It's a great little story from Huddy. And that does centre around that game because it did change football and the result, or the yeah, the score has changed in uh, 
in the Middle East as well, in Qatar. Argentina now are three nil up. They look as though they're home and hosed after 70 minutes. I know they have conceded goals, in particular against the Dutch, they conceded two late goals, but three goals to get back in 20 minutes really does um, leave a lot. The 